elements. We talked about the description of fire area, element four. We've talked about the prescription. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, element 11, 16, and 17, which is organization equipment, holding, and contingency. Because you can see from these spatial models, they actually could, could inform some of these pieces um, quite a bit. Um, so go ahead to the next slide, Jen. Um, the one that shows the exercise. Yeah, so there is a part three to the exercise, and that is going to go through how to use the minimum travel time um, model, which I said is the more advanced model. And I really am going to say it again. If you're not familiar with that, I, I really encourage you to do your homework before you just start start using it. I mean, certainly learn it and play with it, but before you actually use it in a, a, a real burn plan or a real project, you should probably have some street cred with it first. So if you're new to it, you might want to phone a friend, call one of your LTAN or F band buddies that does, you know, some of the spatial modeling and maybe have them help you or walk you through through using that model. Um, I just want to encourage that extra kind of education, if you will, when using that. But I do have an exercise on it, so it's it'd be great if you want to walk through it and see how it works, um, which is which is what we want you to do. So. OK, so um, the next piece is go ahead in the next slide. Um, so I want to talk about holding organization equipment and contingency. And the reason I put them in this order is because a lot of people, when they write their organization and what equipment they need, they do it's or it's element 11, right? To me, it should be that it should be after holding, because how do you know what you need until you kind of know what your holding uh, plan is going to look like, right? So I like to think of them in this order. Um, so go ahead to the next one, Jen, and um, let's talk about the holding plan, right? So in IFTDIS, I think the holding plan where you want to show critical holding areas um, is IFTDIS is great for this because it really visualizes the spatial uh, out layout and then where are the red pixels? You know, where's the high rates of spread? Where's the high flam lengths? I can really show that on a map. Um, and that can really be helpful when you're designing this section of your plan. So go ahead to the next one. So in this, we've got back to our Cyrus unit. Um, we've got three areas. Uh, the first one is the top right. And again, that's that area between the burn unit and the house. Right. We talked about that's a little it's about 0.6 miles, um, but it's got this continuous fuel bed right between it. It's got all the shrubs. So if you're burning with a southeast wind, you know, it's like, hmm, OK, that could be a holding concern for me. Um, the uh, image on the left, the uh, the one that zoomed out a little bit more and has the arrow going down towards the river here. Um, that's another stretch. It's about four miles, but it's another stretch of continuous fuels, you know, depending on what wind you're burning out of. You know, there's some structures down here by the river. And God knows we've seen some crazy fire behavior these days. Um, so four miles doesn't isn't isn't that far an area anymore. <laughs> um, it seems like it used to be, but it's not anymore when it comes to a fire getting out of hand. So um, so when we come to these critical values, whether they're outside of the unit, the last picture is the stuff that's inside of the unit. So if you want to look at what flame lengths, if you had needing to protect, for example, we have this orchard, which is in the kind of the top center of the north line. Maybe that needs to be protected. Well, what kind of flame lengths can I expect there? Um, so go ahead to the next slide, Jen, and um, we'll basically look at the fire behavior as it uh, applies to the, some of those things I was just showing you. So in IFTDIS, the outputs for flame length, um, looking at that area between the bottom of the burn unit and the structures by the river, this is flame length. This is the desired end of our prescription. You can see our flame lengths are between you know, 8 and 11, 11 to 25 in the orange areas. The high end of the prescription, it gets even, you know, higher flame lengths, which you might need to meet your objective, but would cause a problem if it escapes. So this is how I think IFTDIS can do a great job of illustrating that. Um, if you're talking again, if you're sitting down with a line officer and just trying to 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 talk through getting signatures and how you're going to handle this stuff, you know, putting this in your burn plan would be great. You know, the pieces that you need to tell your story. So go to the next one the interior values. Again, if you're trying to protect the little squares are the actual those values within the unit. If you're trying to protect 
and and you know you don't want to burn up the the orchard or the aspen stand you know what kind of flame lengths again can you expect maybe you need to talk to your uh, resource specialists and sort of show them and this is the mitigation we're going to do in order to not burn up the orchard um, under our desired prescription this is what we might get you know under a high end of our prescription so you can plan your holding resources right based on on some of these outputs so the next one is an example of a holding plan and where you might take this image and stick it in your plan. So under element 16, you know, under different winds um, scenarios, these are the areas that you might have a concern with when it comes to holding, those critical holding areas. And to me, this picture really tells the story rather than writing a paragraph like trying to explain this, just stick the picture in and you can point those things out on the map. Um, then when it comes to element 11, which is the next uh, slide, and you're trying to decide, well, how much stuff do I need in order to hold this burn and maybe protect those values? Now you can look at those rates of spread, those flame lengths, the distance to those values. Um, and granted, you're going to do this out in the field, of course, because you're going to know you're burning it, you know, intimately from walking around in the woods. But th this way you can you can really use the, the pictures to to illustrate what you know in your mind. So I think of it more as a communication tool than anything. And it's probably gonna maybe just affirm what you already know, but when you're trying to you know, get buy-in for these things, these pictures really help. Um, so that's why I think if you do this and then think about your organization, it's a little better order to do it in. Um, so then go to the contingency planning, which is the last section. And the same thing. So what contingency planning is determining what other stuff, what additional stuff and actions I'm going to need in order to keep the prescribed fire within the scope of the plan, right? So contingencies planning is if my holding plan doesn't quite work out and I need some extra help, what is that going to look like? So by using this example of the house um, that's off to the north of the burn unit, I can use our minimum travel time model in IFTDIS, which again, this is the exercise three if you want to walk through that yourself. So go to the next slide. And the minimum travel time model in IFTDIS actually shows fire spread under certain weather conditions. So in this case, that house is about 0.6 miles. And in one burn period under our desired uh, fire behavior in our prescription, you can see the spot fire, if there was a spot fire on the north end of the unit, it might spread close to that that house in one burn period. So that's a good way to think about it. Well, if I get a spot, you know, how am I going to deal with that? What kind of resources do I need? So go to the next one, John, and then this is the comparison. And again, you, the same compare model that I showed you, the compare weather, you can do that with our minimum travel time model as well. So you can see a spot fire under low conditions, under desired, and then under our high, high prescription parameters. Um, so hopefully that comparison, you know, looking at these things, I, I put each screen capture on here just to make it easier to look at on the slide, but you can do this in ifty this and then toggle those on and off um, to kind of go back and forth and, and really look at what you've got. Then you can go back and rerun your prescription numbers too. And maybe you want to modify, you know, that high end a little bit. Um, and then the last slide here is the, the actually putting that information into your burn plan. So once again, illustrating this actually in the document um, for this key area that's important to you. Um, and there might be other parts of the, you know, the burn unit that are also important, but you know, maybe this is the one you're trying to show the example of. You know, you can stick this right in your burn plan, show that critical holding area and then show uh, the contingency plan and, and how you how you put, plan on on dealing with that when it comes to resources. So that's sort of how I think of holding organization equipment and contingency. Um,